everyone, it's Kara at Grains and Small Places, and today I wanted to share with you a no need bread made with fresh milled flour, of course. So let's get started. I've had a lot of people asking me how they could make a no need bread with fresh milled flour without sourdough. So I wanted to show you this loaf of bread and it just makes a beautiful artisan loaf. Now we do have to start it about 12 to 18 hours before. So I'm going to show you how we start this the night before and then we'll bake it in the morning and I'll show you how we do that too. So let's get started milling our flour. So we're going to be using hard white wheat today, about 390 grams. And I will go ahead and post the recipe in the description box below. That way, if you want to find out volumes or have the recipe, it's a printable recipe or anything like that, it'll be down in that box below and you can check it out. So let's mill our flour. Okay, so you may need somewhere between three and four cups of flour here. Everybody's going to be a little bit different with how they use this recipe. But to the fresh milk flour, I'm going to add two teaspoons of salt. I'm just using this sea salt and a half a teaspoon of yeast. Now, I know that seems like it's not very much, but remember, we're letting this sit overnight so that it can ferment and get more delicious over time and during that time naturally it's going to help the gluten to form and that's why we don't have to knead it so once we mix all the dry ingredients together i'm going to get about a one and a half cups of warm water so i'm looking for about 90 to 110 degrees fahrenheit and no warmer we don't want to kill the yeast that we just put in there so we want to make sure that it is not too hot for us to put our finger in i'm going to start mixing this up together and I don't want any dry flour to remain so I want to make sure all the flour and water is incorporated that way while it sits overnight it can start absorbing those liquids and if you have a shaggy dough at this point as long as all of the flour is wet then that is good to go mine is slightly on the wet side I probably should have added just a hair more flour here but it's going to end out perfect and you'll see spoiler alert this was delicious and it turned out great but again you may have to adjust the amount of flour that you are going to use because everybody's home is a little different everybody's wheat variety is a little different and if you even wanted to do a mix of hard white and spelt or hard white and kamut or hard red and spelt <laughs> um, all those combinations are great you just want to make sure you have the majority of the flour being the hard variety so now I'm just gonna cover this and let it sit at room temperature on my counter overnight for about, I guess, 12 to 18 hours would be the ideal time. So let's go check in on that cabin edition. Okay, we're wrapping up on this cabin edition and you can see we have our new fixture here. This is the half bath we ended up with. And I will show you what we've done in, oh, this is, they still have a bunch of stuff in here that's gonna go in the other part of the cabin, but I'll show you what we've ended up doing in the other portion. So we have our new floor transition here between the two different floors. And it is um, level between here and here, uh, just with the transition bar here, but it's the same height. And then the two new closets and then this is where like the furnace and utilities are and then the floor here and then now this used to be where their bed was and the wall is out and now it's all open so this is where their tv is going to go and they're going to have some furniture here and then their table so they can look out on the new windows over here and then we're still working obviously they just uh are going to have some cabinets added up top here they just went to the store actually to get those and then this is the full bathroom which was the existing bathroom but um we ended up moving where the toilet was it was sticking out into the room so we pushed that back against the wall to give them more space to get through to their cabinet over here and i think that's it and the kitchen, I think you already saw that one finished. Uh, it's still, still cleaning up some of the mess, but it is really wrapping up on the inside. And we're going to then have um, work to do on the outside. So here is 
He put some of the can lights in over here and then matched the two ceiling fans with the existing can lights that he put in last year. And then you can see this here. <laughs> we weren't quite sure what to do there. That's where the um, old wall used to be and there was seams in the boards. So we're gonna try with this for now and then see if there's anything, if they like it <laughs> or not and if they can live with it or not. So if not, we'll start thinking of a different option. Okay, so we're wrapping up on week eight. So let's check out and see what's going on. And Matt has most of the inside done. So now he's working on the outside. We have to order some siding and eventually the whole outside will end up being sided one color. So that's on order. And Cannoli decided to come and check it out also. So let's go inside and see what it looks like in there. And we've got the furniture put in here. And we're not quite, they're not quite moved back in yet. They've got a few more things to do. They wanna put up some blinds and things, but it's pretty well done on the inside. So he just has a bunch of work to do on the outside. All right, and now it's the next day, and here's our dough. It's been sitting overnight, and I just milled a little extra flour so we could put it on our surface. Now, I know I generally like to use olive oil instead of flour, but for this particular dough and this particular recipe, I think flour is probably the best option. So I have this little mat here, which will help me clean up the mess and keep it nice and tidy. So I'm just going to sprinkle some of this flour. This is just soft white wheat that I milled. You probably can melt any kind that you prefer. It's still a little warm. <laughs> and I went ahead and put my, you can, if you can make this in a Dutch oven. I don't have a Dutch oven because it doesn't quite fit in my oven. There is one Dutch oven I found fit, but it was just so heavy and awkward to use. I just use a baking saucepan and I'll show you what that looks like. But I went ahead and preheated that to 450 degrees and with my pan straight in. So I'm just going to take this out. It's very soft and loose right now. So let's see if we can work with this. I'm going to put a little bit up here. Just gonna sprinkle this with flour because this is very wet here. And I'm just going to begin kind of not kneading necessarily, but folding this all to the center. Kind of how I would shape one big roll and then flip it over and I just want to cup and squeeze it in until the top seems tight or taut and this holds its shape better. This is kind of a wetter dough. You can see some air bubbles forming here. Just want to keep just a light dusting of flour on the outside. Okay, and then I'm just going to dust this with a little bit more flour. Seems to be holding its shape nicely. And I'm going to get a piece of parchment paper to put in my bowl here. And this parchment paper is going to serve as basically handles. So when we pick our dough up and put it in the hot pan, we won't burn ourselves. I'm just going to put that in there. Sprinkle this with some flour. You could use cornmeal or rice flour here if you prefer. And I'm going to put it seam side down. Kind of the opposite of what you would do with your sourdough because this is not sourdough. And then I'm going to cover this and let it rise for another 30 minutes while my oven preheats. And I'm actually going to go ahead and just dust the top of this with just a little bit more of the flour.
and you could score this if you wanted right before you put it in the oven. And you could use the rest of this to feed your sourdough starter or put it in a freezer bag and save it for another recipe. Okay, it has been rising for about a half an hour. And this has been preheating, oh, it's hot, in the oven. So we're gonna, this is very hot, so you wanna be very careful. So we're going to use these as handles and pick this up, put it down into our hot pan, put back the lid, and then this is going to go in the oven for 30 minutes. After about 30 minutes, we're gonna take the lid off and then bake it open for about 10 minutes, and I'll let you see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to take the lid off and then it's going to go back in for 10 minutes. I'll let you see what it looks like when it comes out. And while this is almost ready to take the lid off, I was just gonna show you what I do while I'm waiting for bakes and kneading and how we have to kind of multi-use different surfaces for multi-purposes. So this is what I'm doing right now while I'm waiting, getting ready to sew. So that's on our dining room table. I actually um, have a dog and cat collar business and I sew and make those and ship them off to people. And that's what I do for income as we travel around, as my husband also does carpentry and RV roofing and things like that. So I've had questions about people asking me what we do and how we travel and how we make it work. So that's just a little inside addition to what we do to make it work. Okay, let's check the temperature and make sure this is at 205 degrees Fahrenheit. I checked it one time and it wasn't high enough yet. All right, 205, it's actually at 206. I checked this earlier and it wasn't quite ready so I put it back in the oven so that it could bake all the way through because we don't want it to be gummy. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and put it on a cooling rack. We're just gonna let it cool on a wire rack and I'm going to use the parchment paper here as handles because this is still very hot. I'm gonna pull the parchment paper out so it can cool completely. And obviously if I had a real Dutch oven with the steam and all of that, this would have probably broken open a little bit nicer, but this is what I have at the time, so it'll still taste delicious. I'll bring you back after it cools, then we can slice it, but we don't wanna slice into it now because it will end up gummy. So when it cools, we'll slice it up and I'll let you take a look.